Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, this is a very wonderful afternoon. Welcome to our discussion and our conversation this afternoon. We welcome the online viewers as well as those here with us in church. And we hope that uh, we are going to have uh, a wonderful conversation together uh, with uh, the panelists that are here with me. As a way of introduction, I'll introduce them and ask them to say hi. Uh, on my father's left is uh, Natalie Wanga. Natalie is a third year electrical and telecommunication student at uh, Multimedia University. Uh, Natalie is a member of New Life SDA Church and a very passionate child evangelist. Natalie, please say hi to... God is good and all the time. Amen. Uh, next to me is uh, Lamek Nyamora. Lamek is a student at University of Nairobi. He is a student of law uh, in Parklands campus. He serves as uh, the head elder of uh, the main campus, uh, main campus covering uh, the main campus we know as well as Parklands campus. Uh, he is uh, 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 a good friend uh, uh, and most likely will be a member of New Life soon. <laughs> so Lamek, please say hi to... Praise God, church. Uh, praise God again. Uh, looking forward to the study. Welcome. On my right is uh, probably known to many, uh, Elder Opere Nyaroya. Elder is uh, the president of... Uh, uh, Adventist alumni of universities and colleges. I don't know if I got it right, Elder. I tried. Uh, Elder is, uh, is an engineer and works with the National Transport and Safety Authority uh, and a gospel engineer. Elder, please say hi to... I greet you all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Buona sefewe. Thank you. Myself, my name is Jim Omolo. Um, a member of New Life SDA Church, uh, serving in the Public Campus Ministries Department. This afternoon, we have a conversation titled Hope in PCM, a fertile training ground for church workers. Church members, did you know, um, and this is a revelation from uh, an annual council of the General Conference that ended this last week, that since the church began, we've had, or rather in the last 57 years of our church history, when our records were up to date, we've had a total of 42,294,215 members. Of this, since, since 1965, we have lost 17,594,544. Now, if you make that into a percentage, we've lost about 42% of our members. Well, that is over time, but it could be something that is happening to date. A study was done around 2011, again by the General Conference Statistics Department, and they realized that half, more than half of those leaving the church today were young people. In our setup, in the Kenyan context, most young people, they come from home uh, in different parts of this country. They come to the university, they meet a vibrant university church, they integrate, they serve. And after university, because most college jobs are found within the city, they will remain in Nairobi or any other city around them to look for work and any other opportunities that may come their way. Our conversation this afternoon is seeking to answer the question, why would we lose these people that have been trained in the universities, in the colleges, and yet they were ready actually to support the work that each church is doing at its own level. Now, the statistics that I shared with you equally mentioned that the reasons why people leave church are rarely because of theological differences. That it is usually because 
people are going through a crisis in life or they would experience conflict within the church community or they feel unmissed, they feel uncared for, they feel unimportant. So most people do not just deliberately decide not to be Seventh-day Adventists, but it is out of circumstances that things just happen and they slip through the cracks. And so as we begin this conversation, at least in the PCM context, I'm going to ask my panelists here, um, uh, and I'm going to ask Natalie to uh, just lead us in a short prayer, and then I'm going to ask them questions that will seek to answer uh, the dilemma that we are facing right now as a church. So Natalie, would you kindly pray for us? Okay, let's pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, thank you so much for this Sabbath day. Thank you for giving us the privilege of sitting at your feet and listening to your wonderful words of life. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving us a privilege to discuss um, matters pertaining public campus ministries. And Lord, how we ask for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. May you give us solution to our problems so that your name may be honored and glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Natalie. So I'm going to start with Elder Opere on my right. Um, Elder, you have been a product of public campus. Um, really, your ministry was born out of your experience in public campuses. How was it in your time? Normally, one of the biggest uh, challenges young people would face in church is being reminded in our time. <laughs> so, Elder, we want to know what your time looked like. How was it in your time? And then I'm going to ask the young people to tell us how is it now. Thank you so much, Brother Jim, and all the panelists and all the viewers. Thank you. If you have asked me how, it wa how was it in our time, of course, my time in the university was between 2002, in that decade, the decade of 2000 to 2010. Of course, then again, I went to the university for master's, then now I'm going again for PhD. So if I'm, I'm sure you are concerned much more of when I was an undergraduate student. Uh, what, what I would say, having been privileged to be the, the pioneer leader of Kenya Universities and Colleges Adventist Student Association, Kukasa, from history, we find out that, first of all, the number of students were few. Adventist students in the universities were few. There were no major private universities at that time. So we only had the University of Nairobi and constituent universities or colleges like Kenyatta, um, Egerton, later Moi University came, and Jomo Kenyatta University. We, only, we, we had five public universities in Kenya for a long time. But at inception, from what we get, since the number were few, most of the students used to go to the nearby churches. So the students at the University of Nairobi used to go to Nairobi Central. The students at um, University of Makerere in Uganda used to go to Kampala Central. The students at the University of Dar es Salaam used to go to uh, Magomeni Mwembechai. So one of the reasons why it was like that, there were fewer uh, personnel in terms of pastors who could minister to the needs of university students. Most of the pastors uh, in education, most of them reach diploma level, and because of that gap, there was also that fear. But as time went by, the number of universities increased. Adventist students increased in the universities. The universities also multiplied. Right now in Kenya, we have around 33 or so public universities and nearly equal number of private universities. So when the number increased, even the Adventist church was not left behind in terms of the training of their workforce. Most of the churches, you remember around 2000 and something, it was a policy even in this union, all the pastors had to go back to, the school, to school to get their degrees. Because of that now, they were more equipped to meet the needs of students in, their public, in the public universities. 
And because of the few number, fewer number, the students were being ministered to from the union level. If you, those who know, we used to have pastors like uh, Jack Sequera, who was a chaplain at the uh, this, uh, East, uh, East Africa Union. Later, we had people. Before then, there were people like Craig Newborn. We also had, after Jack Sequera, we had people like Ray Ricketts, at least when I went to the university. Pastor Cesar Wamaleka, Pastor Nyamwanda, Dan Masi, then Pastor uh, Njagi, then Pastor Macharia, at least in that order I know. Then West Kenya now, after split, we have Pastor Guy. Now, because the number has increased, the church has now been forced to ensure that at fields and conference levels, there are also pastors who can meet the need of the students. Fewer universities have got resident chaplains. At least Kenyatta University became the trailblazer to employ an Adventist chaplain within the campus. That now made it easier because it was realized that the use, the need of a chaplain was not only to appear on a Friday Vespers, but it was realized that students undergo a lot of things, including social, what I would call social, economic, political, and all those forces which they need some spiritual guidance from somebody who is trained and has got the know-how. That is how it was in our time. And the major thing, which was a catalyst, which we'd have joint retreats together, intervarsity rallies together, and I think that is where we caught, we caught the spirit of retreats across the East Africa, which was a privilege to serve as the Secretary General in 2004 to 2007. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Perry. Um, certainly, you have, you have stories to tell. Uh, around your experience. But let me come to uh, Lamek. Lamek, how is it in the University of Nairobi right now? Uh, what number of churches are we talking about? What number of campuses are you ministering to? Uh, just give us a picture of what it is like in the University of Nairobi right now. Uh, amen, amen. Uh, thank you, Jim, and uh, thank you, Elder, for, for the comments and starting the discussion off. Uh, I think I, I really agree with Elder um, in as far as the idea that I had for campus church, um, I, I first of all never perceived that there would be a campus church. Uh, when I came to the university in 2019, September, um, I think I had one friend in the university, Modekai Amayo, he led us in the health session in the morning. Um, and I called him, told him I've come to the university and I don't know where to worship. So I expected that I will, he will maybe directly to Central Church or because I, I don't come from Nairobi myself, I come from Nakuru uh, or maybe South Church. That is the idea that I had. It never occurred to me that there was a church on campus. Uh, so he told me to, I think I attended Kenyatta, Kenyatta Church, uh, that is a medical school church. Uh, they celebrated the anniversary, for the anniversary on Thursday. Uh, so it was a Holy Communion Sabbath the announcement was made that there was going to be a car meeting that week. And that is how I got my orientation. Because the orientation week was that week, I didn't attend. And so attending that camp meeting, what stood out for me was organization, organization, organization. Something that I had not interacted with at the local church. Um, I didn't expect that people, my peers, will be that organized, that there will be that much fellowship, that there will be that kind of diligence, that kind of music, um, such kind of speakers coming to, to speak to us. And so it was really a blessing uh, for me. I think that is what has retained me uh, in the faith. Probably if I could be going to a local church, maybe I could have digressed somehow. Uh, but having that presence where you have your peers who encourage you uh, that you can actually keep the faith, that you can actually be vigorous, you can actually be vibrant, you can actually stand up for Jesus uh, at your tender and youthful age. I think that is one thing that really retained me in the church. So as it stands right now, uh, the University of Nairobi has nine churches um, or nine campuses, nine companies under its jurisdiction. Every campus, apart from Parklands, which is an ongoing discussion that there is going to be a church in Parklands uh, and Puea, Presbyterian University uh, of East Africa uh, is also part of, of Yonsda Church. 
And so just looking at where Elder has, has started us off to where we are right now, I think it is a blessing. If you see the kind of conversation that we have in Parklands, because there is no congregation or there is no place, venue to worship in Parklands, um, there are so many souls that have been lost because it is, um, uh, it is all chaotic. Ellen White writes that um, Martin Luther um, wrote, recorded that the universities will be the, ho the halls or will be the gates to hell if the scripture was not preached in the universities. And so it is great progress that has been made. There is a lot of organization. For example, like where I worship in Maine, we have four ministries. Uh, we have Bible studies in the ministries. Every day there is something to do. On Sunday you're having Bible study. On Tuesday you are, on Monday you are going for choir practice. On Tuesday uh, you, are, you are maybe going for door to door uh, or you're going for street missions. On Wednesday there is midweek prayers and vespers. On Thursday, there is something else. On Friday, there is Vespers. On Sabbath, there is also something. On Sunday, you are in the board, you are attending the board. And so there is a lot of organization that I am sure not many people expect to be happening uh, on campus. We have patrons. Um, we boast of a robust network of associates, which is also very uh, beneficial in terms of resources. Whenever you are planning for anything, associates will always come in uh, to support so that is one thing that, that, that is needful to point in as far as uh, the campuses is concerned. Um, I think that is uh, how I would define or my perception of the university just compared to as elders put it out and as I perceive it as I stand. Thank you. Lamek, yeah, you almost threw stones when you said uh, you came to University of Nairobi and you found better organization than in your local church. I don't know that you would You'd want to think new life is less organized than the University of Nairobi, but that's a conversation for another day. Uh, Natalie, how is it in multimedia? Okay, thank you so much, Jim, and my fellow panelists. Um, multimedia, unlike Uonsda, is still a very small chat. It's not yet uh, fully grown, but uh, my experience right now is quite different from our elders' experience, more like Clamex's experience. So um, multimedia is such a wonderful church, and um, what really stands out for, stood out for me on day one was um, the kind of warmth and, you know, the kind of welcoming they give to, especially first years, last ones. Um, the, uh, you find people who are within your age bracket. I mean, you... Uh, when I went to campus, I saw people of my age who, you know, quote SOP, and you know they've memorized scripture, and you're like, wow, I mean, eh. Hey. And I was so shocked, and I'm like, this, these are my age mates. And so it really challenged me to search more uh, of the scriptures and to read more because, um, you know, it's, such, it's, it's, it's a good challenge. And uh, something else that uh, stood out for me is the proactiveness of the people in campus. Because if you don't do it, then who will do it? I mean, there's no one else to do it, so you have to do it. So um, I went there and found elders who are my age, and I'm like, I thought you were still kids. I mean, you can actually be an elder at this age. And so it really inspires you to... Uh, think out of the box and to be very proactive and take whatever task you're given very seriously because if you don't do it, then no one else will do it. And then uh, something else I can say I also appreciate about the public campus church is um, I, can, I can appreciate that the Adventist church as a whole because we have been supported by um, our mother church, which is Karen Community Church. They invite us for their camp meetings and, you know, um, they are always there, by the way, to support us and to nourish us spiritually, um, even uh, giving us things like career advice and things like that. And one more thing is that um, I will touch on the associates. The associates really inspire us while we are in campus because we have gone there to study, of course, and also spread the gospel. But uh, we are not just there, to, you know, uh, we don't spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week in church. So 
uh, seeing people who are in the church, who are once there and have succeeded in their career fields really inspire us. And you're like, if he did it, then I can also do it. I mean, if he was in my field, he went through this university, went through the same problems, then I can also do it. So it has been encouraging. I have found a career advice that I don't think I would have found if I just stuck to my local church. And yeah, it has been a great blessing indeed. Thanks, thanks, Natalie. What I hear you saying is that, you know, you are appreciating that in a campus church setup, there is an appreciation of intellectual growth as well as spiritual growth. And those two things are a power in our world today. Now, I still want to dwell on the two of them before I come to Elder. Uh, we are talking about training. The campus church is a training ground for future church workers. What sort of training is happening in your campus, Lamek? Um, praise God. Praise God again. Uh, when I look at this church, uh, probably the IT guys, the pianist, um, maybe a third of the lesson teachers, um, maybe a half of the, of the people in the choir were first in the university. Uh, they were first in the university, then they were received in the local church. And so there is a lot of training. I think we interacted with Crispin over lunch hour, and he was telling me that he mentored uh, Mose, who is uh, now a mentor to many in the, in he owns the right now. And so when he told me that, I, I was actually surprised that the, the heritage goes way, way back. So there is a lot of training in terms of talents. Uh, we do a spiritual inventory. Uh, like I was talking to one, our, our former head elder, uh, Elder David Coero was telling me that uh, there was there is a, a friend who came to confide in him recently that it was that time that you asked me to chorister that I discovered that I can sing. So there is a lot of discovery that happens on campus. Uh, there is a lot of training. We go for missions. People go and uh, and preach prophecy, get to study. Uh, you go and teach uh, health. There are so many medical missionaries who are graduating from the university right now. Uh, there are people who have actually finished their, their careers and they have not gone to their career fields. They are focused on medical missionary work. Some are focused on being evangelists. So in terms of spiritual gifts development, there is a lot that is going in. In terms of leadership training, um, um, preparing people for the, uh, for the leadership in the local church, preparing people for leadership in the corporate world, preparing peop uh, people, Adventists, for, the, for this world. There is a lot of training uh, that is ongoing. We have our patrons, we have our associates. Every year when we are having the orientation, it's a, some kind of orientation for le new leaders. Uh, for the Yonsda Church, we get a place, maybe WCK, uh, have a leaders retreat. And associates come, they train us on dispute resolution. They train us on management of finances. They train us on a balance in academics and, and, and spirituality. Um, all these things. This is information that you will have paid a lot of money to acquire. You will have attended a, a seminar for two weeks uh, to acquire, but you just get it for free. So the, if we just get that kind of support that you have been receiving from the associate, from the local churches uh, around uh, the metropolitan, there is a lot that we can actually give back to the society once people have graduated from the university church. Thanks. Thanks, Lamek, for that. Uh, and, and maybe let me ask the same question to Natalie, but probably just bring on something new. Uh, Natalie, while doing this training, what are the challenges that you're experiencing in your church community as students? What sort of challenges are you going through that are making or hampering uh, the efforts being made to train you to be better leaders or better uh, Christians while at it, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Before I go to the problems, let me just speak a bit on the training. So in my perspective, uh, for the campus church, there's both conscious, as in there's, there's training that you are you are, uh, they sit you down and you are trained, okay? Then there's just training that comes without you being sat down, like uh, training that comes automatically. For example, 
if a need arises, you are being trained without knowing it. For example, I'll give you an example. Um, when I joined campus, I, I didn't know I'm capable of being a chorister, and I didn't know I'm capable of being a music director. And so, you know, uh, they just saw, some of my friends just saw how interested I was in music and all that stuff. And so, um, they, they decided to just put me as a chorister, and soon I was an assistant choir director, I was an assistant music director, then a music director. So, um, that, uh, there's some training that I received that I did not like sit down with a book and a pen to write, but it was because I was interested in music and I would, it, it would just happen unconsciously. I would learn things without just sitting down. And uh, uh, another type of training that we have, we, we have seminars in school uh, on leadership and leadership roles and, you know, um, trainings pertaining specific departments. And uh, I can say that it has been a blessing um, to undergo those trainings. So uh, some of the challenges many campus students face in the training area is uh, number one and the major, I can call it major, at least it was for me, is feeling insufficient. Uh, you will look at a task that you're given and you're like, am I really capable of doing this? You look back home and you're like, I have never even been a chorister in new life. Now they, are, they have placed me as a music director, like what will I do, feeling insufficient. Another thing that I can say we face as a challenge in the training field is, um, yeah, just majorly feeling insufficient and sometimes maybe a lack of people who support you or personnel that can assist you. For example, if you go to campus and uh, there's no one to train you in music because our campus doesn't offer music as a course. So you will find in a church that there's no one who knows how to read music or, in, or doesn't know much pertaining music. So the lack of personnel and lack of people to train us, yeah, those I can say are two major problems that I have faced personally. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Natalie. Uh, Lamek, your challenges as a head elder Praise God. Uh, okay, I think it is audible. Uh, I think, personally, uh, the greatest challenge that I faced is closely related to Natalie's. Um, you are coming from a church where you are either a great multitude that to get the opportunity to be involved is very minimal or once in a while. And so the, the university church, I think that problem is also an advantage per se because it is also a safe space. You can mess around your peers than you would in a, when you are in a board of new life, eh? and you are sitting in the new life church board. <laughs> uh, there is no room for, um, for, for mistakes. Uh, but at, at least it is a safer space when you are in campus to, uh, to, to, to mess here and there. And then once you come to new life, you, you are fully grown. But the greatest challenge, I think, is resources. Uh, resources. Um, some of the... Um, if maybe we are, we are talking about um, learning instruments, you, you will need to purchase this, this equipment because there are so many people who are ready to offer the, the lessons, uh, getting a piano, um, uh, all these resources. There are these talents that need to be nurtured. You want to organize maybe a workshop. The school will offer a place and a venue for, for you to, to have the retreat. But there will be other factors uh, that, that will have financial or... Um, um, financial implications. I think the other thing is getting trainers uh, to train the various aspects that we need to learn. Uh, so uh, some, sometimes it is just rolling in the mud as you go until you learn. Uh, you have to do the research uh, yourself. So that background coming from a church that you are not being involved and now it is that scary new thing that you have not interacted with before. I think that is the, the greatest challenge that you, uh, that you experience. But at the end of it all, uh, the song says, the strife will not be long. Uh, this day, the noise of battle. The next day, the victor song. Thanks, Lamek. And uh, 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 before we probably would come to the question of how do we deal with those challenges, uh, Elder Opere, you have heard, they are saying they are elders, they've been trained, they are 
they are reading and quoting SOP, uh, and most likely the elders have read the hand, elders' handbook, church manual. When they come to new life, how do they stand out? Uh, thank you so much. That is how do they integrate after leaving campus, which is more of an ideal situation. Um, I think uh, just to add something on one of the challenges before I tackle that, uh, if I reflect also as a student then, one of the challenges which I found is identity, identity problem. Uh, most of the young people, you go to universities when I would say they are still growing spiritually. So there is a lot of pressure from adolescents. They, uh, they were very obedient because they were in the eyes of their fathers and mothers or those who love them. But now you go to university, there is no uniform. There is no assembly. So you are on, you are on. So there is also a, a lot of identity issues because there are a lot of opportunities abound. You want to be in this, you want to be in that. I remember I joined karate club in the university. For a whole year, every evening we'd be running from the assembly hall in Jekwat up to the main road, barefoot, because you want to be strong. So you end up missing church choir, I joined the university choir, not the church, Ilaya University Choir to go and sing for the president. Joined a lot of things. I, I came from high school as an actor. I used to, I joined the drama club of the university. So you want to excel, you are trying, you went to athletics, I found I could not fit in that life, abandoned it. Then from you to now find your path and harbor that now you cannot be everything and you're doing engineering of eight units, you find that maybe you have gotten a wake-up call because of supplementary. So, so I found identity crisis is a very big issue in the university. Also, which brings the aspect of how do you balance your time? Because there are a lot of things which are jostling for your attention on that. The issue, another issue is financial. Students are perpetually broke. I don't know if nowadays help is grown big, uh, a fatter, but as a student, students are perpetually broke. So you have come from the rural, you, have meet, you meet the elites from those who went to a group of schools, while for you, you came from a polling station in the name of a school. <laughs> so <laughs> you find that kind of challenge. So that, of, that kind of challenge you find social, social pressure is also there. For second year, people have started getting girlfriends, boyfriends. You start asking yourself, what about me? But those are now challenges. But it's also an advantage as an Adventist because now we've got opportunities for retreats. Now you can have a girlfriend in Uganda. You're playing now international, not only domestic. <laughs> Tanzania, Rwanda. Now you are uh, international. You are not playing domestic. Upper maybe KU. You are talking of Makerere, Mukumba University, Sokoine University, you know, Butari. So those are some of the challenges, but with opportunities also, because they are not only challenges, they are also opportunities. Another one which I would say is the, um, the academic, which I've mentioned, pressures. If you do not know how to balance time, in the first year, first semester, you may realize you might get a supplementary, which may be discouraging. After that, you get it in second year. Now you have or a third year there, or third year there. But those are pressures which come ranging from all that. Political. Formerly, politicians used to come and address university students, all these top politicians, and we will be there questioning them, questioning them. Those are opportunities and challenges. So, you will struggle, do I go to student politics? Or do I remain, do I abandon it? So those are pressures which I would say. Which therefore brings the need of public, stronger public campus ministry to offer guidance like Natalie was saying, that maybe you cannot be everything at the same time. You need to get these trainings. You need to be here and there. Do this specialized core function there in the university's academics. These other ones are secondary. We cannot omit them, but we cannot lose the sight that the Lord has taken you there for academics to excel, but as also as a missionary. 
Now you asked me the question, now they have left campus, they have come to the local church. In the university, you are all living around in the same place. You have the same time, timing. Your time is controlled, you are the same. Because if it is lunch break, it is for the entire university. All, everything is programmed. You are on fire, on fire. Like faith on fire. That one was one of the Kampuri themes for Oshkosh. Faith on fire. You are on faith on fire. But when you come outside here, you wonder now, how do you integrate? It is not only a problem which I would say faces them. It is a problem which I battle with. After training pathfinders a lot, they have left the pathfindering very charged. Then I wonder now, how are they going now to again now into another stage, ambassadors and all that. But one thing is, it is a challenge. When I was leaving campus, some of my friends were saying, don't go to a bigger church like New Life Central, because in those churches, people are so many, you will die spiritually, because no one will see you. I told my friend, for my case, me, I am not going to those small ones. Me, I'm going to a bigger one, because that is where I feel my domain fits. So, my former patron at the university, Professor Steve Gong, he was our patron at the university and Professor Chora member when I was a student. So, even after leaving the university, they worked a lot to help me, make me come here. I was staying in Kibera, Uko, Kwa Bedroom, Uko. But I decided to, to come to this church because of that friendship. That is one advantage of PCM. When we create friendship with these students when they are in the universities, when they come, they will not be strangers. So how do we avoid them being lost or being strangers when they come to our local church? Let us create friendship now through PCM ministry to these universities and create friendship. So when my brother here as a lawyer, when he graduates, we need him in new life, a pool of talent, which brother Teddy said. When Natalie graduates, that is by default she's here. But another person, we need engineers here, architects. You can see new life now with that ability, mental ability God has given, but now toned down in the spirit of God, how it can carry out evangelism. So for them to be integrated effectively in our local churches, let us create friendship now, which I do, as the president of Adventist alumni, we create what we call mentorship programs. Mentorship programs. We mentor. I was in Lukenya University two weeks ago. I was invited during the celebration of their charter. I was invited on capacity as a president of Adventist alumni to encourage them and tell them, when you come to Nairobi, the place to be is Fifth Gong Avenue, New Life SDA Church. That is the place to be. So if you are a master guide, we have the Flying Marines, Pathfinder Club, one of the biggest in the entire third planet. If you are in AMR, Adventist Muslim Relation, we have a defined department. Through that, our young people who are coming from the universities will never feel lost because they will find defined departments where their talents, gifts, and abilities can be used. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. I hear what you're saying is we have to be as new life intentionally intergenerational. True. We have to go, find them, identify their talents and gifts, and place them in opportunities that will utilize those talents and gifts. New life carries missions every year, be they street missions or be they visits to children's home. These are things that, if I heard you well, these young people who are very energetic and will most likely have more time than the adults would be more than willing to do. But let's hear from them. We could be speaking on their behalf. How do you want to be received when you come to New Life? How do you want to be received? Um, Lamek. Yeah, thank, thank you, Jim. Um, first, first of all, I was hard tasked before to, to, to find challenges in terms of training. Uh, because, again, you have received a lot of support. If I say that we are going through so many challenges, I will either be, um, I, I will not be saying the complete truth. Yeah, so you have received a lot of support. 
But the greatest challenges that we face, um, apart from resources, of course, uh, bringing them together, is at a personal level. As a university student, as Elder said, facing identity crisis. You are trying to pursue your career, you have uh, the pressure uh, to succeed. Um, there are alluring temptations, there is the forbidden fruit there uh, that you have been told not to take, but it is very appealing to the eye. Uh, there are so many temptations that come, and we see from the book of Daniel, if you could turn, uh, the book of Daniel chapter 1, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, it's actually Mishael, um, uh, the, from verse 7 we see uh, that, okay, verse 6, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were more like in a university. It was like the colonial times. Uh, the white colonialists came, they established schools, they taught us English, they taught us to speak the language of the Engli England, uh, uh, the king of England. They taught us their faith, they taught us everything. And that is the same situation that Daniel and the young men, the young Hebrew boys find themselves in. They are in a strange land. Uh, they have been recruited. Uh, with very specific instructions uh, that the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. Verse 4, young men, and this is a description, in whom there was no blemish, Adventist, huh? but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, university students, who had ability to serve in the king's palace. Career people, and whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. And so you are in the university, and they have not been created fundamentally to teach people how to, uh, to worship God, or how to keep the faith, or how to sing, or how to, to obey God's commandments, but to advance, to solve the problems in the, in the secular world. Uh, which is not something that we can complain about, but it is something that we need to know how to live with. And we see that these uh, people decided, uh, and it is an inspiration uh, we get from Daniel, that he purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. And so that is the greatest challenge that we face. And if we could get that kind of mentorship, uh, El Elisha had Elijah, uh, Timothy had Paul, um, uh, we had Jesus with Peter. These people were mentored. And there was a school of prophecy uh, that El um, Elijah was instructed to start. And there is a quote here that comments on it uh, from Patrick and Prophet, page 593, that says that the school of prophets were founded by Samuel to serve as a barrier against the widespread corruption, which is in the campuses, to provide for the moral and spiritual welfare of the youth and to promote the future prosperity of the nation by furnishing it with men qualified to act in the fear of God as leaders and counselors. And so the campus church is the school of prophets. It's the school that is going to retain, uh, the church that is going to nurture and retain the people that you are going to receive in the local church here in New Life. And so how are we going to be integrated? I think I will use the analogy of uh, marriage. Uh, you don't just... I meet a lady and, okay, you know, uh, an elder is supposed to be a man of one wife, uh, but uh, I can confirm that, that I am as I am right now. Uh, just the grace that the conference has extended that universities uh, can have elders. And so I have no experience, but I have the or theoretical knowledge that it starts from dating, it goes on to courting. And so if these people are going, to, if we are going to be integrated into new life, into Central Church, into Egerton Castle in Akuru, it is, starts right now, while we are still on campus. That relationship has to be nurtured right now. And so that when it is time for transition, we are now living to become associates, it is very easy because you feel welcomed, you feel like there is a plan already beyond uh, the River of Jordan. Amen. Uh, naturally, would you want to say something on how you'd want, I know you are, you are born and bred in new life, but speaking for your colleagues in multimedia, how do you think or how would you imagine they'd want to be received? Okay, um, 
I'll focus, okay, I'll majorly echo what Ed and Tamek have said about the friendship that needs to be formed in the, while we are still in campus. Because you, without being my friend, you will not know that I am maybe talented in music and I served in school, maybe as a deaconess, as an elder, or as a music director, you would never know. And therefore, once I come back to church, you won't know that I can fill that void, and so I am just automatically left out. Yeah, so that's one thing. Uh, another thing I can say about how we'd like to be received is, um, if you look at the public campus church, let me speak for multimedia, for example. On Friday evenings, we prepare lunch for Sabbath, and we will be there as a team, you know, while working, we bond and tell stories, and you'll find the head elder, if he's free or he doesn't have church duties at that time, he'll come and help in cooking chapati, and we bond, we make, we, we laugh together, you know, and we form friendships, you see. Um, I can say that is not something I have seen in this church, in, in bigger churches a lot, because we'll will say that as for elders, they have their, you know, their own work, their, their own uh, greater tasks, and they won't mingle so much with young, okay, sometimes they do mingle with young people, but not as much as the elders in campus will mingle with the, the, younger, uh, the younger people or people who have different roles. So how I'd like us to be received when we come to the church is even while we, uh, once we leave campus and come to church, we'd like for that friendship to be there. We'd like for the elderly people to mingle with us and not to be maybe shy or afraid of talking to us. You see, that mingling and bonding and forming friendships, it really makes us free in the church and it helps us also explore our talents and yeah, use our talents to serve in the church. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks, Natalie. And probably if I hear you right, I think what you're equally saying is you would appreciate if we, have, we, we trusted you more. We believed that you are good people. We believed that you are gifted, that you are talented, and that you're able to take up the work. I think that's really what you're, you're saying. Um, we are coming to the home stretch of this discussion, uh, and and and. As we, as, we, as we end, we probably now want to look at a few practical things that we could do to um, help at least arrest the attrition rates that we earlier mentioned. Elder Opere, you know, one of those conversations that is big in the church now and probably has been there for years is do we need to employ new tricks to retain the youth? How do we retain the youth in a church context? And, and, and maybe just listening to them, you actually realize that they are not looking for a new form of religion. They are probably doing old religion more than we are doing. But how can we as new life retain them? Uh, thank you. I think this, is a, that, this has been a very big question to the church administrators at all levels of this church. And that is why we even have nurture and retention department. And there are many committees which have been formed on this, that how do we retain these members? Now, with a specific emphasis on public campus ministry, because they leave our hands from high school as believers. But when they go to the universities, Sometimes they do not come back as believers. They come back as unbelievers. So that is the question that how do we ensure that they leave our hands as believers? Actually, that is a very big question to me that after uh, uh, giving my best in Pathfinder age to the children who are Pathfinder age, which is my passion, 10 to 15, then now when we hand them over to ambassadors when they're joining universities, Sometimes I question, I try to follow them up, those ones which pass through my hand. Are you still keeping faith? Or how would we ensure that they retain their faith? That's been a question. But I would suggest one thing. 
In the current situation, the university is like in our division, as they said, in 204, 205, 206, the church adopted the style of university churches. That is when it was started. So that they were organized into churches, leaders were chosen, elders were chosen, and they were put in charge so that they could run the affairs themselves and to make them more responsible, as Natalie was saying, leadership, which may not need that you are taken for a seminar, but you are on duty. So, right now, a lot of departments, a lot of activities have been introduced even in our public universities. We now have a master guide. We started it when I was in JQUAT. We started master guide the first time in public universities. We extended to KU, Egerton. Right now in all the universities, including public and private, where the advent is, there are master guide clubs. There are nearly all the departments. We have a AMR. Adventist Muslim relation. I, re I, I remember I used to even participate in Muhadara, only that I was limited in Kiswahili. So, <laughs> but I would combine with English in Mariakani when we went for Muhadara. So you realize that there are many departments now in the church which can involve young people. Because one thing is that at the university, when they are going past adolescent age, they are now at the proactive stage of the faith. They can now analyze what their parents were telling them. And now they come to a conclusion that truly they were teaching us right. Now they can practice by themselves. When they find where they can be actively involved, then we will be able to retain our children in the universities. One of the reasons why PCM is very critical even for this church, I've seen parents whose children have gotten admission letters to universities. Some Nowadays, they're even admitted by the Central Placing Committee to even private universities. Maybe you are an Adventist, you are admitted to Presbyterian University of East Africa. Some parents ask, are there Adventists? Are there Adventist group in that church? You realize that parents are concerned where their children are going. That is a wake-up call that we must invest in those institutions so that the faith of our children when they go to those institutions can be guaranteed. So what I would say is that let us mentor. I would still, one, number one is mentorship. Let us provide mentorship as the mentors and them as mentees. Let us be as mentors, demonstrate uh, seriousness in life. Seriousness in the thing, things of faith which we have been called to do. Then let us also give them support which is necessary. Support which is necessary. Because it is after all our children who are going to those universities. And also let us speak the languages which they understand. Let us speak the languages which they understand. Without diluting or compromising faith. We can now not call a disco that that is the, what they, they love. No, we must stand with unsaturated faith. But the young people must also be trained to walk the path so that they are not used to sad like things in terms of the message. They must also be trained to be responsible and walk the way of the true faith. So we can adopt the languages which they use, uh, which the people use. The, in chaplains, we say, speak the language of the group. So if you go to hospital ministry, speak the language of the medics and those. If you go to ma military, speak their language. If you go to the group of truck drivers who are away from home, from Port of Mombasa to Goma in Congo, speak their language without compromising our faith and our standards. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Elder. Uh, and now I'm just coming back to the two of you, uh, and you could combine this with your closing remarks because I see our time is up. Um, what help do you need now, right now? If New Life was to intervene in multimedia or University of Nairobi, what help do you need now? Uh, praise God. Um, First of all, it is, uh, uh, it is important to, to uh, read the quote in evangelism uh, that goes in line with that question. 
that let every worker in the master's vineyard study, plan, devise methods to reach the people where they are, we must do something out of the common course, uh, devising new tricks. Eh? Uh, we must arrest the attention. Uh, so it is a very good question that we can come up with, with new tricks to, to reach out to people. What help do we really need? Uh, I'll just say the greatest challenge that we have is resources. Uh, there is a lot of evangelism to be done in this city. Um, setting up an open air in archives is not a very bad idea. It's a very good idea. Uh, setting up um, a mission within the campuses needs resources. Um, getting mentorship in terms of training for leadership, training in terms of career, that's a very good idea. Uh, and that has been happening before. If we could continue, the better. Um, the support that you have always received, you know, uh, getting the buses at a subsidized cost, um, getting uh, the mattresses whenever you are going for a mission, whenever you are having camp meeting like we are right now. Just the support that you have always been receiving. But now I think the conversation that, and as I now give my closing remark, um, is that as the local churches in the metropolitan and even in other in Nakuru, the universities that are there and the churches that are there in Maseno, in all the, the corners of this world, I think we need to develop a common conscience. We need to agree on what is our purpose and which direction we are headed. Um, I am there was a time there used to be a union for all the universities, um, for students, that is. And we can even come up with a congress and discuss matters as pertaining mission within the, the universities. So de developing that conference, having regular discussion like this one, having PCM departments within the campuses, I can confirm we don't have the department in our, in our campus, but having a department that actually focuses on evangelism within campus, on ministry within the campus, as against now the one that we usually do at the end of the year going to uh, distant places, we can actually have a department within the campuses in Jaikwat, in M University of Embu, celebrating their fourth year anniversary as well. I think we'll go a very long way. So I think developing a common conscience, uh, in the words of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1, some were given apostles, uh, some were given uh, finances, some were given the talent, some were given the time, and that we make all come to the unity of the body uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. So let us develop a common conscience and move forward uh, as a team. Thank you and uh, have a blessed afternoon. Natalie. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to really appreciate the Seventh-day Adventist Church as a whole for supporting public campus ministries because um, I haven't seen any other church doing the same as we do, so that is really good. Um, however, we really need your prayers, first of all, because we battle a lot in school. You may not know, but the things we experience in campus in terms of our spiritual growth and receiving other teachings that conflict with what we have known since childhood, and you know, thinking that, oh, this kind of makes sense, but so we, ne we really need your prayers to stand firm in the faith. And uh, something else that we need, of course, as Lamek has said, we really face challenges with, res with resources. Let me give you an example. Multimedia University, as I said, is a small church. We are organizing a mission in December. Our target is 800,000 Kenya Kenyan shillings. And we are students, we don't earn, except for the little pocket money, which is meant for, you know, to cater for our needs. So we really need resources from, the, from you people. And yeah, we, we really need resources. Something else that I can say we need from the church, which I appreciate we are doing, uh, is empowerment in terms of career, uh, empowerment career-wise. So, um, and I'd really like to thank the church again, because for example, tomorrow at Multimedia, we're having a career clinic. And so I'd like to invite you all, if um, you can come and give us your advice, and so you're all welcome. So yeah, I just say, please keep on praying for us, pray, pray for the church in the campuses, for the churches in the campuses. And uh, secondly, you, we need your resources, we need you to really support us. And thirdly, we also need your guidance in the career path. Yeah, thank you.
Thanks, Natalie. Elder Opere, your closing remarks. Uh, thank you. I think uh, this young I would give assurance to our university students that um, as PCM, Mosor of New Life, we are ready to partner with you and give our support according to the measure of our faith and ability uh, so that you can also prosper. As a product of PCM, as a leader in this forum, in this sector, I would also assure you that we are doing our next part, actually, meeting the union, incoming uh, union chaplaincy or PCM leader, uh, because West Kenya didn't change, and also the division, so that to see on ways in which we can re-energize the PCM ministry, not only in these unions here, but across the division, the numbers have increased. Issues like intervarsity rallies, which is also key for you people as for your growth so that you can come together, universities come together. Like now, we could have had the universities around this location coming together. West Kenya Union, a Laureate region, Kisumu region. So such kind of things, university rallies, all those activities, intervarsity music extravaganzas, things like that, Bible congresses or conferences, intervarsity Bible conferences, such kind of activities we are going to revive. And then finally, at the end of the year, when the universities, the PCM at the division has organized for universities and colleges retreat across the division, it is also an opportunity for you also to come. Now not only interact with the Kenyans, but the 12 nations or so within this division, starting from Dr. Congo to Bojombora. Port Mata in Port Matadi, from Owenikibuli in South Sudan to Motwara. All those areas, you meet people, share ideas. This year, December 26th to 31st, roads will be closed except the one headed to Ishaka Adventist Institute at the foot of the mountain of Moon, Mount Ruenzori in Uganda, for the Adventist alumni of colleges and universities retreat. For more, you can see me after this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, our panelists, and uh, thank you all for listening to us. Um, as we close, all that we've been saying today would probably be summarized this way. Two gentlemen are seated next to a river, and their children jumping into the river from a cliff to swim into the river. So immediately they get alarmed. They go try to rescue them because they see that they are drowning. But more and more children keep on coming into the river. And then one of them decides to leave the river and go to the cliff where they're jumping from. His friend asks him, where are you going? And he says, I am going upstream to stop the problem once and for all. The challenge for us as members of the church is to go upstream. You know, we have had them. We have had they are ready. We have heard they just want to be integrated. But they're asking us to go upstream by coming where they are and lifting them so that we can take God's work forward. John 15 verse 9 uh, says, uh, and, and that's the last text I just want to read before we, uh, we pray. John 15 verse 8, it says, Herein is my father glorified that he bear much fruit so shall he be my disciples Christ desires us to bear much fruit the work can be done by the energy that we are seeing right on this pulpit may the Lord bless you and may he help all of us make that commitment to support this course I'll ask Lamech to say the final prayer before we end shall we pray Gracious Father and God in heaven, we thank you for the gift of this afternoon. We thank you for the gift of the Sabbath. We thank you for the gift of one another. We thank you for the discussion that you have had. We don't take it for granted that we, uh, Natalie and I and many other university students, have the opportunity to know you while we are on campus and to, to stand up for you. We pray that you may go before us, fill us with your spirit, that you may keep the faith and that we may, uh, fight, we may fight the good fight. Uh, and that we may um, run the race of faith. We ask, O oh Lord, that uh, for the discussions, for the resolutions that you have made, 
uh, for the future that we are, are planning for, that you may uh, disturb us. Uh, you may bless us with your spirit, uh, that we may know that which is your will, and that we may be diligent in implementing it. We pray, O oh Lord, for the programs that are, are to come. We pray that you may also still abide with us, and that you may bless us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.